This is the web series for the love of BIM, promoting Barbados, everything Bajan Canadian, and everything Canadian Bajan. Welcome to the penultimate episode in the second season of this web series for the love of BIM. I am your host, Sonia Marvel Carter. Yes, we're counting down only one more episode after this in season two. Our feature for today will be Maya Conliflane Sinkitz, and we will speak with Maya about her love for dance, her love for languages, and traveling around the world teaching English as a foreign language. But before we get to Maya, I must impress on you the urgency for you to donate and support our brothers and sisters in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So when I'm giving the notices, I will remind you of all of the ways that you can donate and lend your support. I also promised to keep you up to date on our Healthier Lifestyle Challenge. So we'll take another sneak peek at a team member as they engage in their exercise routine. Okay, just like Ellis last week, it seems that Consul Gibbs is doing well and showing off. Maybe I think we need to get some of the ladies to challenge them. And now to the birthday shout outs. We start our birthday shout outs with Monique here in Toronto, who celebrated on April 11th. And these greetings are coming from your kids, Omari and the Manny, your mom, dad, and all of the family here in Barbados and TNT. Next on our birthday shout out list is Crystal and she celebrated on April 14th. Greetings are coming from the Fossa family, Foundation School all the way. Jennifer shouting happy birthday to you in Barbados. Hope you're keeping safe. And these greetings are coming from the posse here in Canada and the entire entertainment fraternity. Next on our birthday shout out list is my cousin Laura, who celebrates tomorrow, April 18th. This hardworking lady is on the front line daily. And these greetings are coming from hubby Patrick, Enrico and Tara, Lee and Gina, mom and dad and the entire family circle, both here and in Barbados. As soon as it's safe, we need to get together, Laura if Sunnybrook can spare you for a moment, that is. Next up is Dr. Dave Padmore, Barbados's Honorary Consul in Nova Scotia. Hope you will have a great day on April 22nd, Doc. And these greetings are coming from Team Barbados here in Canada. And last, but by no means least, greetings go out to another one of our Honorary Consuls, Dr. Myrna Lashley, Barbados's Honorary Consul in Montreal, and Dr. Lashley celebrates on April 23rd. Happy birthday, Dr. Lashley, from all of us at the High Commission and the Consulate. Hope you have a super day. It's time for our feature with Maya Conliflane Sinkets. So tell us, how did you get into dancing? How did you uh, develop this love for language? Yeah, give us some um, history on Maya. Yes, so I've been dancing since I was two. Um, uh, and it pretty much only happened because a friend of my my dad's had a dance studio. So she was like, she, you have to put her into dance. You have to put her into dance. So my parents did, and I turned out to love it. And it was, that was history. Um, so I was, I did competitions, I did performances, and I was classically trained in ballet, tap, and jazz. Um, and that was a huge, 
a huge part of my life um, since the age of two. And as for the languages, um, it's that's a funny story for me because I remember as a child, probably around, around five years old, we had uh, French Canadian neighbors that um, I used to play with their kids. And so at one, at one point I was invited to uh, a birthday party. And of course these kids, they went to a French speaking school. So all the kids at this birthday party only spoke French. <laughs> and I was there like a fish out of water, didn't understand. I was like, can someone speak? I have no idea what's going on. And from, I remember from that moment, I was like, no, this is not gonna work. I need to learn French. Gotta understand, I don't wanna be in a situation again where I have no idea what people are saying around me. So from there, and then I added on, I don't know why I was so intrigued by Spanish after that. So as soon as I could, um, that started in high school, then I took languages in university. That's what my undergraduate degree is in, French, Spanish, and German because then I added on German at that point. So it just, <laughs> just kept going. <laughs> so after my undergraduate degree, the last year of which I spent in Germany, I did a year abroad, so that was a great experience. And I went straight to Barbados from Freiburg uh, for crop over, <laughs> of course. And I stayed there for a couple months. Um, tried to figure out what I wanted to do, and I ended up coming back to Canada in at Christmas to, to start a um, a postgraduate degree in marketing marketing management in 2017 January of 2017. So that was next, and I worked in that for a while, and then I decided to move to New Zealand. <laughs> so the idea. The plan was to move to a different country and work in marketing and just experience living in a different country. Um, New Zealand sounds kind of random, but uh, I swear there's a story behind there uh, somewhere. But anyways, I, <laughs> I decided to move to New Zealand and I couldn't get a job in marketing. So while I was trying to figure that out, I decided to, I got a job at a restaurant that happened to be a Spanish tapas restaurant and a lot of the people that worked there were actually also on a youth visa like I was on and they were Spanish speakers from Argentina, from Uruguay, from uh, País Basco, uh, Basque country um, and did I say Argentina but they were just Spanish speakers and it just started up this um, a new flame from my languages that I realized that I had been missing and I soon realized that, no, I actually want to continue working with my languages. And it was kind of like a eureka light bulb moment that I wanted to get back to the languages and work in translation. Okay, so from New Zealand, um, I went to Costa Rica and I, the first month I was there, I did a TEFL certificate. So that's teaching English as a foreign language. Um, and that was a month long course. And from there, I started working as a teacher, an English teacher in Costa Rica. And I was, so that was July to August of 2019. Um, and then um, I was there until COVID happened in March. And actually I was supposed to leave Costa Rica and go to Colombia. So be in another Spanish speaking country, I was super excited about that, but because of COVID, I had to get back to Canada, go home. So during COVID, you traveled as well. So tell us about that. Tell us about that other experience. Well, um, it wasn't supposed to be during the pandemic, but um, in February of last year, 2020, I applied to teach English in France. Um, and um, so that was my plan for October 2020 um, to about April of this year. Um, but with the pandemic hitting, I wasn't sure what was going to happen. We didn't find out until June that, um, well, I didn't find out until June that I was still selected for this program, but it was still happening because, even, even with the pandemic, which was a shocker to me, but um, French schools were still open, so they were still going ahead with this program. 
So I decided, I gave it some thought and I thought, well, you know what? I will go and see how it is. Um, and you know what, if I ever feel uncomfortable, I'll come back home. But I decided to, I guess it was a bit of a risk to go over there and, and see what that was about. And I, I didn't regret it, I didn't regret it. How long did you spend then? So you went over in what, October of 2020? In, in September. Mm -hmm. And I came back last month. I came back in February. So it was a bit earlier than planned. Um, but I still got a good four, four or five months in. Mm -hmm. How was that experience? Or how has that experience been um, teaching English in, in these foreign territories? Um, I love it. And um, I think I've been trying to hide away from the, the teaching genes that I have. Um, my mom is a teacher. My grandma was a teacher in Barbados, a mistress. And um, uh, the tackle brought it out of me. And um, I completely, it's, I think because I'm a language learner and I've learned French, Spanish, and German, I, I was excited to finally give back and help um, other people learn English and it's so important for a lot of people because English is such a uh, huge language for people to know um, so I really enjoy connecting with students and learning more about their culture and um, just helping them get to where they want with uh, the English language so that's definitely been uh, a treasure one of my favorite moments in 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 working with languages is helping people who are struggling, struggling to speak um, English and they just want to be understood and you can recognize which language they speak and you speak to them in their language and the relief that just floods over them is, they're just like, oh my gosh, this person is going to understand me and I don't have to struggle to look for words. Even if you're not um, perfect in communicating with them, you still can understand um, them and it just creates a bit more of a a connection with with whoever um, so that's I guess that's one thing that I love about languages Thank you so much, Maya, for sharing with us. But what Maya did not tell us is that she is now engaged in teaching English as a foreign language online to Portuguese speakers in Brazil. And she is doing this as part of a program with Barbados's ambassador to Brazil, Tonica Seely Thompson. Keep up the good work, Maya, and thank you, Ambassador Seely Thompson, for spearheading this initiative. Now, I'm actually going to show you some pictures of Maya on her trips. I think Maya's story encourages us to follow our dreams. Now, before I sign off for today, I must remind you of our events coming up as well as some notices. You are watching an episode of For the Love of Ben. We are reminded that relief efforts are still underway for our brothers and sisters in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Monetary donations are being accepted as this allows the SVG government to employ economies of scale and purchase in bulk at a much better price. The e-transfer and GoFundMe accounts advertised here are authorized by the Consulate General of St. Vincent and the Grenadines here in Toronto. Tomorrow, Sunday, April 18th, 
Join Team Barbados in Canada at 9 a.m. for the online worship service to kick off our Heroes Celebrations with the James Street Methodist Church in Barbados. So join us online at 9 when we give thanks for our national heroes and unsung heroes. We will share that link in the description of this video. Or just log on to James Street Methodist Church on YouTube at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Then on Friday, April 23rd, join us again online when we gather for our heroes. Oh, you caught me doing my best bus of pose. What do you mean, wife? We still gather enough. We asked you to nominate 10 unsung heroes and the nominations came rolling in. Now it's time to celebrate. On April 23rd, join me, your girl Reva Reeves, DJ Monty, and of course, Biggie Irie. And we gather for our national heroes. Now this is a free event. All you gotta do is click on that link right there and join us for fun and celebration as we gather for our national heroes. And our unsung heroes. April 23rd, see you there. Don't miss it. Don't miss out on this. Log on and see the unsung heroes from among the Barbadian community here in Canada being honored. You're also reminded to get your tickets for the upcoming Bring On The Spring event. And last, but by no means least, don't forget our two-part immigration seminar on April 22nd and 29th. Well, that's all the time we have for today, folks. So I'm expecting to see you online tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. for the service with the James Street Methodist Church in Barbados. And of course, at the event on Friday the 23rd with Biggie Irie and our heroes. Until then, stay safe. <laughs>